Wait, let's be clear. I'm not happy about this, but you asked for it. We are back with the third episode of the Scarf Joint versus One Piece Neck Series. To quickly recap, we built two identical necks out of the same block of wood. One with a scarf joint and one cut from a single piece. Then we applied force to both of those necks and measured the amount of movement in the headstock. The result? Well, we found that the one piece neck defied our expectations and outperformed the scarf jointed neck, at least in terms of headstock flexibility. Huh, but then the comments started to roll in. Things like, you applied too much force, or the forces are distributed across the entire neck, not just the joint. Uh, your apron is crooked. Okay, I made up the last one. The one comment that stood out the most though, is that the brake test is the most interesting. So the brake test, or maybe more specifically the drop test, is where everyone seems to think that the scarfed joint neck will outperform the one piece neck. It pains me to break two perfectly good necks, but here we are, we're gonna do it. Let's go. Now, you've probably concluded that I am not much of a physicist, and you'd be right about that. Math and science were certainly not my specialties, but I did watch a lot of Mythbusters, does that count? But my only hope is that you can appreciate my intent and maybe learn something along the way with me as we go on this journey. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking for the test. Uh, a typical drop of a guitar is going to be probably from like a guitar stand where it gets bumped into and it falls over or we didn't get it set in there correctly. Uh, or maybe somebody leaning a guitar against something and it, it's sliding and, and falling to the ground. There's probably other extremes as well, like it falling off of the like a drum platform or maybe a raised stage. So we'll see what we can do about those you know differences in the tests along the way. Look, I, I thought about this. I wrestled with this. I know that what you probably want to see is a fully built out neck with a fretboard, uh, headstock veneer, tuners installed, all strung up to standard tension. I get it, that would be cool, but I'm not convinced that that yields a different result. I mean, at that point, we would be building a full guitar and essentially building it to break it. It already pains me to break these uh, perfectly good necks already. So I think we're just gonna go with this instead. So here's what we're gonna do. We wanna simulate that drop test that everybody's interested in. But I can't drop this neck, it doesn't have any weight to it. So the thought is, is we're going to fix the neck to a stable position and drop something against it of what would be equal weight as a finished and built out neck. Now I realize some of you are going to immediately take issue with this method of testing as you've already indicated prior to this that we were concentrating all of the forces into just right at the neck joint and those forces would be distributed normally across the entire neck. I understand that, I agree with you, but I want to limit the variability of the testing as well. If I hang the whole neck off of the bench and test it that way, uh, I could you know, snap the neck at a, at a completely different part and I don't think then we would get the result that we're all looking for. So I realize that this is going to concentrate a lot more forces than would likely be seen during a regular drop but uh, I think that we're ultimately going to get the results that we're looking for uh, just because we're going to have consistency and we only get one shot at this with these two identical necks. So here's what we've put together. A finished guitar neck with its fretboard, truss rod, all strung up and on a guitar weighs in at around two pounds for our builds. Now that's weighing it as it's leaning over as if it was about to strike the floor. It's its heaviest point as it's leaning over. So what we put together is this solid piece of uh, mahogany 
weighs in as it's leaning over about 1.8 pounds. So it's similar in weight. We have attached it to a hinge to work as its pivot point to simulate if it was sitting in a guitar stand and falling over. So the way that we're gonna do the test is the neck is going to be fixed here to the workbench. We're going to lean the board to about the point it would be sitting uh, in a guitar holder and we're gonna let it fall under its own weight and strike the neck. That's the point that we will measure the impact and assess the results. Okay, I, I don't know, I guess we just let it fall, right? Like we would lean this to kind of like where it would sit in a guitar stand or something and then just, just let, let it fall, right? That's terrifying. All right, well, wait. I, nah, we gotta use a test piece or something. Yeah, this is crazy. We gotta test on something first. Now let's let it drop. I've got a test neck in there first. This is a scarf jointed neck, but it's an old neck that I built that I wasn't planning on using. So let's first check the alignment, make sure we're gonna come down okay. It looks like we're gonna hit right on it. Okay, now let's do the test. Dropping the guitar in three, two, one. Look at that. That all looks good, I don't see any damage to that neck. We'll check that back in slow motion and kind of see what that looks like, but that looks, looks pretty good. Okay, one thing I did notice is that uh, when I watched it back in slow-mo, uh, when the initial hit happens and the first couple of hits after that as it bounces back, uh, I do see it arch here in the middle where I don't have a clamp, so there is some of those stresses that are being uh, pushed back into and absorbed into the middle of the neck. So what I probably do is go ahead and just put a clamp here in the middle as well just so that we get as much of that impact happening and all of the forces happening concentrated in this spot. Um, I think that will help our test. So let me do that for the next run. Let's try it again. Yeah, so that looks a lot better. All of that energy now is not being absorbed in the lower portions of the neck. It's all being concentrated right there in the headstock. And that's what we want. I think we're ready now to move on to what we've all been waiting for, which is to test the real necks. Let's do it. Here we go, testing the real scarf jointed neck as if it is falling out of the guitar stand. Test in three, two, one. Looks solid, no cracks, no damage. Let's try the one piece neck. Same test. One piece neck this time. Guitar falling out of its stand in three, two, one. All right, that all looks good. No damage, good to go. Since both necks came through with flying colors, I think it's probably time that we increase the weight. So I grabbed a couple of scrap pieces that were laying around and attached them to the end of our block here. So now we've got uh, 1.8 is what we had originally. We've added another 1.9. So we're just over that three pound mark right now. We've replaced this neck. This is now the scarf jointed neck again. So we are ready to go. Increased weight, just over three pounds on the scarf jointed neck and the leaning guitar and stand test in three, two, one. Whew. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Well, this is pretty interesting. We broke right at the joint, uh, but it, I, I've only got one spot that looks like maybe didn't uh, get good glue, uh, glue spread there, but everything else 
is torn away fibers right at the joint. So the, the glue held, um, but the actual fibers tore loose. Now, I'm a little concerned that I added too much weight. I, I didn't think that doubling that weight was going to have that level of an impact. But uh, I guess we'll find out when we test the next one. We're gonna go to the one piece neck uh, next and let's see if we get any different result with that. Okay, kind of nervous actually uh, on how this is gonna go. This has now been replaced. This is the one piece neck, testing with the same amount of weight that we just did on our scarf jointed neck. Roughly three pounds, just over three pounds of weight in the leaning guitar stand. Testing in three, two, one. Well, that is really interesting, huh? Man, I don't, I don't think we could have gotten a better result than this. I, I'm gonna be honest, I was nervous after I broke the first one I was really concerned because I thought, well, just I added too much weight, and if I break the second one, then they just both broke and I didn't prove anything. But this actually makes it fairly clear. The evidence shows, and I think proves out, what we were interested in learning in the first place. Let's take a look at our results. Both necks broke, obviously, but they broke in very different ways. If we look at the scarf-jointed neck, we can see that the fibers tore away right at the scarf. So the scarf itself is what broke. And you can see we had a little bit of a glue up problem here. And you could argue maybe that that created a weakness and invalidated the test. But I still think that overall the test is still valid. You see the wood fibers tore away and the glue is what actually held. That, that makes sense. We all know the glue is stronger uh, than the wood fibers. But then you come over here to the one piece neck and it broke as well, yes, but what didn't break is the actual joint of the neck itself. The headstock is what snapped. And again, that goes back to that short grain. And so I, I think there's very clear and clean results uh, between both of these breaks. Well, that ended up being a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. But how do we wrap up the results? Was it a success or was it a failure? Well, I think we learned a ton. So from that perspective, I think we had a success. If you think back to the very first episodes of this, what we learned in that was that the one piece neck was more resilient to the forces that were applied to it. It had less deflection. So I'd say that was a good lesson learned. In this test, we learned something different about both of these neck construction methods. In the scarf jointed neck, we had a stronger headstock, but weaker neck joint. In the one piece neck, we had a weaker headstock, but a stronger neck joint. So what does all that mean? Have I made your neck construction method decision any easier? Actually, I think I kind of made it harder. In this case, we learned that there are positive and negative impacts to both construction methods. There are several things that you can do that will compensate for the weaknesses of both construction methods, and luthiers have been doing it for years. The first one would be a volute on the back of the guitar neck. That gives you additional material that helps strengthen that joint. You could run a thicker faceplate on the headstock to increase the strength or you could run the truss rod opening down into the body cavity of the guitar. That would give you additional material up at the top of the neck joint. All right, I think that it is time for me to stop breaking guitar necks and get back to building them. Man, I hope that you all have learned something along the way and maybe had a little bit of fun in the process. Until next time, see y'all later.